Psychological disassociation. Fascinating, isn't it? Oh, hello. I was fantasizing. Why are you here? Is it that pesky internal drive, much like hunger or thirst? When our curiosity becomes aroused, we look to new or old interests to satisfy the urge. The drive theory. Fascinating. Or maybe... <laughs> oh, you little hypochondriac, you. You must be preoccupied or obsessed with an imagined illness, specifically the topic of today, which must create high levels of anxiety for you. However, we can look into the book about your fascinating behaviors in another fantasy. But this time, come, sit, enjoy. Let's draw psychological dissociation. Yeah, I think about the end just way too much. But it's fun to fantasize. And my enemies where they wish who I was. But it's fun to fantasize. This is another fantasy. The activity of imagining things, especially things that are improbable. I have a book. It's a big book. It's old, large, and coats itself in dust daily, quite paranormally. Just before you arrived, I was studying its definition of dissociation. Nevertheless, we shall open it again. I'm very interested to see what it will show this time. No, I don't have time to explain to you this book and its contents. However, you will understand and learn of its history as more episodes unfold. <laughs> it reads as follows. The evolution of a concept. The origins of the idea of dissociation lie in a body of medical and scientific literature that emerged from 1775 to 1900, and which represents what Ellenberger called the first dynamic psychiatry. The first dynamic psychiatrists were interested in a wide spectrum of phenomena. Each of these phenomena reflected the power of ideas to engender action, as well as change in consciousness in which experience, thought, and action occurred outside of phenomenal awareness and voluntary control. The pathological forms were dynamic illnesses caused by a suggestion or idea whose origins lay in some psychological trauma whose nature was unknown to the victim. As a result of this trauma, certain experiences, thoughts, and actions become separated from the monitoring and controlling functions of a central executive ego. Oh, in this book this happens frequently. Let me describe to you what it is showing me in relation to the definition on the page. It seems evident there was a beautiful young girl a hundred years ago that experienced trauma insomuch she exhibited symptoms of psychological dissociation. It won't reveal her name, but she had a brother who was taken from her by his own hands. The dominant figure in the first dynamic psychiatry at the time was Pierre Genet. Psychological automatism is what psychiatrists like Pierre would label the young girl with as the study of dissociative disorders were only a concept. Continuing, it reads, In dissociative fugue, the amnesia is much more extensive, covering the whole of the individual's past life, and it is coupled with a loss of personal identity and often physical movement to another location. Another form called dissociative identity disorder, a single individual appears to manifest two or more distinct identities, each personality alternating in control over conscious experience, thought, and action, and separated by some degree of amnesia from one or more other forms. Simply put, dissociation is a mental process of disconnecting from one's thoughts, feelings, memories, or sense of identity. In this book, the boy, the girl's twin brother, was older, by only minutes, and as kind as an older brother could be, he protected her and cared for her as they were orphaned from birth. In this tragic event, he left his twin sister in the hands of psychiatrists and orphanages until she disappeared years into her adulthood. The terrible 1918 fire of the Oklahoma State Hospital for mental patients lost any record of the two, but the book has it. The book is good. There was a certain religious group that had ties with the orphanage housing the two siblings. It is not on any record, but the book knows they were affiliated with the occult. According to the girl, she would see her brother go into a room once a week and would be released bruised and sometimes bloody. She'd wait outside the door for him, confused and trying to make sense of the noises. Her brother would then hold her tight as she would often fall into his arms. He'd look into her eyes and while holding back tears would tell her stories of how he would go to other worlds through bright portals. The boy would reassure her by explaining that the process of teleporting was painful, hence the screaming and bruising. In addition, she told psychiatrists that her brother would amaze her with stories of how he'd go to other worlds and fight wars and free slaves and civilizations. After all, that would explain the blood, the bruises, and the screams. She noted it sounded so loud it was as though it was her own. But one day, 
It was the day he was to go into the room again. This time, it was different. It was silent and peaceful. The scary men and women did not come out that day. The boy vengefully murdered those who took the girls at the orphanage. It was this day she saw her brother hanging from a tree on the hill. It was believed he was overwhelmed with the trauma and with blood on his hands. She went up to the tree. She was confused and disoriented. Talking to him as though he was still alive, the girl rested her hand on his swaying leg. One thing she told psychiatrists, is how she didn't understand what he meant the night before. The boy thought she was asleep and whispered to her, I won't let them take you again. You look so blank when you come out. I know it's wrong to pretend and lie. So tomorrow, I will tell the truth from now on. I promise. Psychological Dissociation The mental process of disconnecting from one's thoughts, feelings, memories, or sense of identity. Oh, well, that was a story I did not expect. The book doesn't always show things of that nature. I'm going to close the book now. If I don't, it may not stop. Never leave the book open too long. Did you learn anything about psychology and the human mind? Was there any errors in the book? If you have a story of psychological disassociation, the book would love to document it. If not, see that subscribe button? Look at it. Go ahead. Touch it. Take it out for a nice dinner or something sexy. It's very lonely. There's more to come. And don't forget, it's only a fantasy.